welcome back. My name is Judy and today we're going to be filming a tutorial. I'm going to be making a necklace very similar to this one. It is a very, um, just a very simple seed bead um, necklace. Very beach inspired, very summery. Um, just awesome little pieces to have in your collection. Um, you know, you can wear them every day. You can wear them in the beach. They can get wet. There's no problem with that. Um, you know, they're just great pieces to have, I think. And so I am coming up with the design sort of on the fly because I usually start these necklaces and sometimes I like exactly how it goes and other times I don't, so I change it around, but I am gonna be using these gorgeous check glass flowers that came in the Sam's Bead Box for this month. Um, you can see they are a just a gorgeous dark blue color. And so if you want to make this necklace and you got the box, you're going to need these. I don't know how many we are going to measure it as we go along. So I pretty much have all of them here. I also have these little spacers. They're just regular silver um, tiny spacers um, that you can get on Amazon or, you know, you can use any spacer that you want. Um, I just keep it small because there are seed beads. Um, these are Miyoki seed beads. I have them sort of assorted in this container, um, but they come packaged individually in like tubes. I just prefer the container, so I usually dump everything out into these. And these are six O's, so they are about four millimeter. They're the bigger size. Um, and then I have, I don't know if I'm gonna use this yet or not. It is a little mother of pearl butterfly charm. Now these charms don't come in silver. They only come with the gold cover, but I don't mind mixing metals. So if I do decide to put it on, um, I don't mind. We have one of these um, screw on um, closures. You can also get these. I got these on in Panda, Panda Hall, I think, but you can also get them on Amazon. Um, and then I have some oval jump rings that I got from Wendy's shop. It's a bead on a wire jewelry. I'll link her. I have a couple of wire guardians, a couple of crimp beads. So you can see there and a couple of crimp covers all in the bright silver color okay and then i have some soft flex this is fine uh 10 pound strength you don't really need anything heavier than this it's just seed beads um so this is what i'm going to use i'm using the satin silver color um and that's it. Uh, you're going to need uh, some wire cutters and your uh, crimping tool. And that should be about it. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing is I want to build it around these little flowers. But I think the main color I'm going to use is going to be white. So you're going to want to grab yourself a good piece of this soft flex. Now I, some people cut them, I work from the stool. It's easier for me to do it that way because I don't have to um, guess, I don't have to waste wire. It, this is not the cheapest of things. So I work directly from here. So we're gonna start with these, uh, this color right here, which is you can see this is more the opaque matte white, where this is more of a opal finish or pearl finish white. Okay, so I'm gonna grab, 
out of these to start. And we're just gonna grab them and string them on. And I think for the complementary color, I'm going to be using the yellow. So this yellow right here. Okay, so you can see it. It's a bright, really pretty yellow. I'm going to be just using three for right now. Let's see. And I'm wondering if I want one of these in between. Let's try it for now and see how it works. Okay, so we're gonna put three of these. And actually, you know what? Let's do five of the yellow as well. So we're gonna put two more, okay? And grab another spacer and we're going to grab a flower and I have to find the hole on this you know, it's hard to see they're tiny and it is hard to see through the camera but we will find the hole up here we go okay so I think the yellow looks really pretty with that cobalt blue. I think that works. Okay, so we're gonna put another spacer. Or maybe let's, you know what? Let's do one of these matte white on either side of the blue. Let's sort of break it up a bit. Yep, that looks really pretty, okay? And then we're gonna grab another spacer. And let's grab five more yellow. Okay, so one, two, three. Okay, four and five. And we're just gonna continue this pattern, so. We're going to, and now for the pearl white, so that's one, two, three, four, and five. I don't tend to go for the perfectly even seed beads. Um, I'm actually a fan of the seed beads that are not even. Um, I like the contrast in between them. So that's just my personal preference. Um, but that's usually how I do it. Okay, so we're gonna put another spacer. And we're gonna get some more yellow. One two and three, two more. Okay, another spacer. And then the matte white and another flower. And another matte white and a spacer. Okay, and you can see they're very simple, very fun to make. Um, you can play around with the colors, you can play around with the design, you can play around with the layout. This is just what I happen to like, but you can really just do about anything with them. And uh, they're quick to make. And like I said, they're they're great because you don't, you know, some people don't take off their jewelry. Um, some people go, you know, when they go on vacation and beach time and whatever, and you don't want to have to remember, oh my God, 
I forgot to take this off. It's going to get ruined. You can get right in the beach with these. You can, you know, take a shower. You can do anything and they're completely fine. So I do like that aspect of it. So we're going to go back and grab five more yellow. So one, two, three, four, and five. Okay. And another spacer. And then let's grab five more white. So one, two, three, four, and that's a matte one. Spacer. And then we're going to grab five more yellow. So one, two, three, four, and five. Spacer. And then a matte white and a flower. And I like these to be around 22 inches. I don't like, and now a lot of people like chokers. I don't personally like them. I am very claustrophobic. So um, I don't like them super close to my neck. Um, 22 inches works really well for me. So that's usually what I go for. And I just measure as I go along. So um, you can just grab your ruler. That's what I'm about to do. And we're gonna see where we're at so far. So let's just do it on this side because I have it strong on here. So we are So far, a little over eight inches, okay? So we're gonna keep going and do another loop until we get to the flowers and see where we're at then. Okay, so we're gonna add another spacer. And then we're gonna grab five more yellow. Okay, one, Two, three, four, and five. Okay, and spacer. And then five of the pearl white. So one, two, three. And five. And again, a spacer. Okay. And five more yellow. I really love this yellow with the cobalt. Two, three, four. And five. Okay. And then we're going to put a spacer and we're going to grab one of our matte white and a flower. And another matte white. And another spacer. Okay, we're gonna see where we're at now. So, sorry y'all, my mat is like teeny teeny tiny. I need to find a better beading mat that's not itty bitty, because uh, mine is itty bitty. 
So let's see. We are now at about the halfway point. So as you can see, we're at 11 inches. I want 22, so we are at the halfway point, which is perfect because now we just have to follow this pattern back. And then we will have, you know, until we get here and then we will have our necklace. So this actually worked out pretty perfect. Um, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven yellows on this side and one, two, three, four of the white and three more flowers. So that's what we're gonna do until we get to this last white part. And I'm leaving it, I didn't put a spacer because I have the bead caps, which are silver and those will go there, okay? So we're just going to now work the other half of the necklace. Okay, let's move this out of the way. So go ahead and if you need to pause it so you can look at the pattern exactly, go ahead and do that. And then work your other half of the necklace. And once you're done, come back. Okay. So now we have finished the other half of the necklace, as you can see. So if you hold them up, you can actually see the pattern. Okay. Don't mind my clock. It's loud. All right. So now that you're done with the necklace, we are going to obviously close off this side first because the other side is still in the spool. So I got some jump rings because I didn't know if I wanted to use the jump rings or not, but this has a pretty good size, so I'm not gonna do that. I'm just going to put it right through that. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is you wanna grab, oh, you want your you want your pliers so that you can close this is what you want so let's see I need to get those okay I have my crimp, my crimping tool, and then I also have this. Um, honestly, I cannot remember where I got it. I think I got it from Amazon, but this is for closing the crimp covers, and it does a really good job. Um, I love this thing. So, all right. So we're gonna take our end, and we're going to get our little crimp bead here. Okay, if I can get it out of here. All right, and we're going to put that through. And I just sort of hold it with my fingers for this part at the beginning, okay? So I'm gonna grab my wire guardian and you're going to thread it in one side, okay? And it's gonna go around, and as you can see, it has a little space for the wire to sit on right there. And you want it to be sitting on there. And then you're gonna thread it through back the other side, okay? And you're gonna pull that end, okay? And you wanna make sure the wire is sitting right in that little divot, okay? So now before you close it, well, you have it like this, okay? I'm gonna take one end of my clasp 
and I'm just going to thread it through right to the guardian, okay? And then I'm gonna take this half and now put it through that crimp bead. And you want this pretty tight, okay? You don't want a lot of wiggle room here. Um, you want it pretty tight and you wanna make sure that your wires are not crossed. So see how I have them sitting side by side? You do not want them crossed because then it'll crimp wrong and it can break. Now you can, I usually give this a little tighten at the bottom um, just to kind of almost secure it a little bit more. So once you have it there, just make sure you're holding it. Grab your crimpers and you're going to put this on the second hole in the back, okay? And you're gonna squeeze and it's gonna make that divot, okay? And you're gonna go around the other way in that first hole and you're gonna close that right back up. And now you have crimp. And I think I did that out of camera, so I am really sorry. I will make sure that the other half is in camera so you can actually see what I'm doing. That would be helpful. Um, okay, now, you don't have to do this. You can trim this little piece right now, but I usually like to thread it through a couple of the beads before I pull everything down. So, you're going to pretty much grab the other side and just work all of those beads right down, okay? Now, you do want a little bit of room here because, okay, and we're gonna get this, we're actually gonna take this from here and cut it here. But let's do this first. First, you wanna put the crimp cover on because that's gonna determine how far the beads are gonna go down, okay? So, people do it all different types of ways. I usually grab it with my finger, make sure it's nice and flush where it needs to be and against that wire guardian. And then I come in with these and I use the top part to sort of close it first, okay? And you wanna make sure that these are still coming out through here. And then you just take that and then you go all the way around and you do little squeezes like this. And you can either, you can even flip this as well if you need to, okay? And you just go around until it closes it up and it, does a pretty good job. It closes it into a nice little round bead. Now, if you, you know, there's like little, if you're nitpicky like me and there's little pieces, you can go in and sort of fix those little by little. Um, now, just make sure that it stays in there because these, the crimp beads that I have are a little small for these, but um, once you push everything to the end, it won't matter. So then I'm going to go through about there and I'm going to clip this little bit off. Okay. So just want to make sure that you don't clip the other wire because I've done that and it sucks. Okay. So make sure you don't do that. Okay. We're going to move these out of the way now and then we're going to work the rest of those beads down. Now, you want it pretty tight, okay? You don't want to see spaces or cord in between. So you want to make sure that this is one, this piece is in there where it's supposed to be after you cut it, which is not right now. Let's get it back in there. Okay. All right. You want to make sure that it's tight. Okay. So I'm holding it pretty tightly on this end. 
but you also want to make sure that it bends, okay? You don't want it so tight that the necklace does not bend. That is not good because that's too much tension and then the necklace can snap, it can break. Okay, so let's move these out of the way. All right. So I usually do this part with this all bended because then I know then it's going to bend. So I just sort of coil it like that, make sure that everything is pushed down really well. Okay. And then I leave myself a pretty good amount. I'm going to cut right here. Okay. Put this extra cord aside. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing on this side. So I'm going to grab that and I'm going to try to do this on camera this time. I'm just looking for that crimp bead because it's really small and I am really blind. Okay, so we're going to put that crimp bead in. Okay, now for this one, I usually let it fall because it's got the other beads there. Um, and then you want that wire. Guardian, we're going to thread that through. If we can see and do it, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna bring it out the other side. Okay, I'm gonna push that up. And before I close it, I'm gonna put the other half of that clasp in there. Okay. Now, we are going to get that crimp bead over. that other part of the wire, which this one does not want to do. Okay. All right, here we go. All right, now this one, you're going to hold that up here. Okay. Make sure the wires aren't crossed. And sometimes you will need your pliers for this. Sometimes you can do it with your hand. Just make sure they're not crossed. Hold it there and start pulling it down. Which this one is going to be difficult. Oh, there it goes. Okay. So see what I'm doing? I'm just pulling that down as far as I can. Now remember that you're putting the crimp cover in. So you do have to allow some room for that which I think that looks about right, okay? And I'm still holding the wire so that it's not crossed when I crimp, okay? You still want it as taut as possible, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and sort of pinch this a little bit, okay? I'm gonna hold that with my finger. Okay, and then we're going to crimp this side you now. So make sure. Okay. Crimp that. Okay. And then I'm going to come the other way and crimp it like that. Okay. So now it is perfectly crimped. And then we are going to take this part. I'm gonna to try to thread it through around the same amount as I did for the other one. So, but you do what you can, okay? Well, let's see where it is. I may have gone over by this point, I think. Yep, it's right there on the yellow. So we're going to push in it until we can get it. Okay. And we're gonna pull that through. And then I'm going to Snip it off. Okay. Again, careful with the other wire. 
Just nip that bit off. Okay. And then grab your other little crimp cover. And we're going to place it over the crimp bead. and just close it up and get it nice and rounded so that it looks like a bead. See, it's perfectly round. You can't even really tell it's a bead cover. It looks just like a bead. All right, so there you have it. You have your necklace and close this like this. Now, if you wanted to put the, I decided not to do the charm, okay? Um, simply because I thought it might take away from the actual design, which at least pretty little flowers and being that this is the center there's really no way of getting it to where it is centered now what you can do however if you use a different clasp so if you use like a lobster clasp on here and even now you can actually do it so I'm gonna go ahead and do it and show you um, now it won't be functional it's just a little bit of uh, like a design element but I'm gonna go ahead and do that so that you can see um, a way of getting it on there anyway. Now, if you use a lobster class and you use the extension chain, you can hook it up to the extension chain and then it'll be on the back. Um, I have just this regular chain right here. So I'm going to cut myself, let's see, one, two, three, I would say about seven links. So one, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. So I'm going to cut on the eighth. Okay. And that out of the way. Okay. And then I'm going to come in, grab my jump ring. Let me. So, I don't want to use this. All right. So, and I use oval jump. I like the oval jump rings. I think they're more secure than the regular jump rings. So, that's what I use. So, we're going to add the chain. And then you can add this right to the um, wire guardian. Okay. That's the beauty about the wire guardian. It'll guard the wire. So um, you can hang that there like that. And then take another jump ring. And place our butterfly and then the other side of the chain and now you have the cute little butterfly dangling from the back okay now again if you are going to be using this and getting in the water getting in the beach getting i don't suggest doing this um the reason i use these are because these are stainless steel and um, they're coated, so um, they won't tarnish like regular copper wire, stuff like that. I mean, they will in time, but not like everything else. This chain, you know, unless you're using like sterling silver, which still tarnishes. Um, and this, I just wouldn't recommend it. 
you know, the beads are going to be safe. This is going to be safe. Um, so if you're going to be getting into water and stuff like that, I would just leave this part off. And I mean, you can always, you know, you have it on a jump ring. So if you want to go out and wear it and have just a little bit of an extra decorative element to it, you can put it on and then, you know, when you're just casually using it or getting the water, you can just take this part off and put it in your little jewelry box and then add it on later. Um, but that's pretty much it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and this video. It is very, I know it's very simple. Um, this is, you know, more for beginner beaters. Um, but, you know, I enjoy watching these types of videos myself. So because, you know, you can always see a new pattern or get a new idea, get inspiration. So I hope this helped. If it did, please give it a like subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you get notified every time I post a new video. And until next time, happy beating. Bye.